In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use clay to create some of these Stone Age style beads. Later on in the tutorial, make sure you stick around because I'm going to then fire my clay beads in my backyard kiln, just like the Neolithic people did. Here are some of the materials that Stone Age people used to create jewellery. Bones from animals that they killed or found. Shells. As they were hunting and gathering, they collected these and made holes in them and strung them on string. Animal teeth, tusks, horns and claws were also commonly used and they would have bored a hole into them using simple tools. Also, stones were very common. These would have holes in them sometimes, or they would also make holes in them. Some scientists say they used wood, but little of those remain now. And for stringing, they used leather thong, or lamb or llama's wool, which they would roll to make a kind of cord. To make our Stone Age jewellery, we'll need either some kind of string or leather cord or thong, a kebab stick to make the holes in the beads, a butter knife to cut the clay, and a slab of either air dry clay or natural clay. It doesn't matter whether it's white or terracotta because you can always add color to it later. The first simple bead I'm going to show you is how to create a barrel bead. This is like a cylinder shaped bead and is pretty straightforward to make. So you break off a bit of clay first and you might want to roll it into a ball first. So press it firmly between your hands and as you roll you can Gently press, gently but firmly press any cracks and creases out so that you get a fairly smooth sort of ball shape. The next thing you want to do is with your palm flat roll evenly up and down so that it begins to take on a cylinder shape. At that point, you might find your, that your ends have become a bit wobbly. That's no problem. Place it on the end and just press down evenly one end and the other to straighten it out. Then you can roll this bead as fat or thin as you like. And if you feel that actually it's too big and you maybe you want several beads out of it you can take your knife cut it down the middle and create two beads instead of one to make the hole in your barrel bead twist without pushing too hard twist the kebab stick in one end take it out and twist it, placing it in the middle in the other end. So you're just gently twisting and it will go in and meet the other side. At this point, you can even continue to roll your bead along the kebab stick. This will help to even it out even more. You can, of course, use the end of your kebab stick to draw designs and patterns in the clay. Stone Age people used to do this with some of the stone beads that they created. It must have been very hard work do this in stone. The clay is a lot softer than stone. And 
once you are happy with your little design, tidy up any ends, any bits that look messy with your fingers. And then make your next bead. So there's our barrel bead. I've broken a bit of clay off and this time I'm going to show you how to make a very cool sort of spiky bead. Um, this could be a bit like an animal claw or an animal horn that's been cut off and made into jewellery. So I have a lump of clay and I'm going to just roll it a bit in my hands. And then I'm going to take the kebab stick and stick it carefully up the middle of the clay. And I'm not going to come out the other end, I'm just going to stick it up the middle. And I'm going to then roll that. I'm guiding it with my hand, but eventually I want to be able to roll the clay with the kebab stick inside. And I can always sort of guide the shape with my fingers. As you can see, I'm sort of pressing all the way around and I'm gonna roll a bit more. And you can see it's starting to get a nice round, well, sort of cylindrical shape. And I've tapered it at one end, so it's coming towards a point at this end. Now, along this, I want to get a sort of spiral shape. So, how do I do that? I'm going to take the kebab stick and start on one end. And as I roll, I'm going to drag it back so it creates a spiral going up. Can you see that? There's a little gap here, so I'm going to carry it on. So now I've got a kind of spiral type shape and if I want the spirals to be a little heavier I can press a little harder with the kebab stick as I roll it along. Now because I want to string this along the string I need to make a hole going this way. So I'm going to just smoothen off this area here and then I'm going to make a hole in the clay, pushing gently and twisting on one end, put my finger on the hole so that I can see where I need to go for the other end of the hole and again gently twisting until it comes out the other end. To make a tooth pendant or a tooth bead, you want to roll, take off a piece of clay and just roll it in between your hands, but push the bottom bits of your palms more than the top bits of your palms, so that it creates a rounded top and a pointier bottom. Once you like the shape you've created, you can then mould it in between your fingers to take on a more tooth-like appearance. Uh, it might be pointing the end between your fingers gently, tweaking it until it's pointier. It could even be flattening them. Some of the teeth that I've seen on Stone Age jewellery actually are quite flat and sharp. 
so you can flatten it in between your finger and thumb gently though you don't want to press too hard because you can end up completely squashing it out of shape so you can see that if the clay isn't too wet you could actually smooth it out with your fingers um, and press it gently to get the shape you want and then you want to make the hole across the tooth at the top so just like before twist without pushing hard you don't want to push it out of shape you can even push it till you see the tip of it coming out the other end just there and then you can turn it round and where you saw the tip coming out gently twist and push in that way your hole will be neater there's a few teeth I've seen that have little carvings on them so you can again use different tools it doesn't have to be this if you want to use the end of a pencil for something a bit smoother you can see I'm just gently pressing here as if it's being carved with some sort of pattern. And you can also always paint this after to make it look more toothy in colour with white paint. Next thing I thought I'd show you how to make is some sort of shell. Stone Age people used a lot of shells in their jewellery because these were easily found objects that could be quickly and easily made a hole in and threaded on string. So I've made a flat piece of clay by rolling a ball and gently squashing it. I'm now going to push my fingers in underneath and gently bend over the top of the clay. So it almost feels a bit like the top of a mushroom. If the clay is a little dry, add a little bit of water, just a couple of drops, no more. You don't want to press too thin. If you press very thin, it will become fragile. So you want to keep a fairly thick edge. Remember, clay doesn't like when it gets too thin. Okay, so I'm gonna place this down and now I'm going to have a look at this shell and use my butter knife to trim off the two edges at the top to leave a point in the middle. There we are. So already it's taken on more of a shell shape. I can now smooth off the edges, slightly wetting my finger just a little bit to help me smooth those edges off. And already you can see we've got quite a shell shaped look to this piece of clay. But we want to now add a bit more detail. So this is where as usual, we can do quite a lot with a toothpick or a kebab stick and gently carve, I'm not even carving, I'm pressing into the clay, the kebab stick, to form the ridges that are along the shell. This does take a little bit of patience, but it is 
easy to do with a little bit of practice. Work your way along the shell, pressing the kebab stick in. As always, taking your time, not rushing. Where the clay has sort of created little lumps and bumps, you can tidy them up with your finger and re-carve the shape. Sometimes it's worth cleaning your kebab stick on your hand as you do it so that you don't put back on more lumps of clay. Keep working at it until you like the shape that you've made and then you'll need to make a hole just like you made the hole in all the other beads. If you want to make this bit dented, can you see how I pressed in there? Go down the next one, press in with the kebab stick and you get ridges. Press in to the next ridge and keep going. There's another ridge. So it actually looks like the ridged bit of the shell. Here are my Stone Age beads and pendants all ready to be fired. They've been warming up in the oven so that there's not so much thermal shock when they get into the kiln. Once the kiln has reached the highest temperature I can make it, I carefully put the clay pieces inside and I cover it over to ensure the temperature remains hot. The exciting bit is about to come up because in a minute I'm about to show you my clay pieces the next morning. So it's next morning and I'm uncovering the kiln, taking all the protective pieces off and here we have it, our first glimpse of pottery. You can tell by the colour that it's changed and it's turned from clay to pottery. And now the beads, they're quite hot to touch. I'm going to need to get my glove. Let's take a closer look at these beads. When I take them to the side, they should make a clinking sound and that will tell us that they are no longer clay and they have turned into ceramics. This is something that late Stone Age people, Neolithic people, discovered. I hope you've loved this tutorial and enjoyed watching how Stone Age people created ceramics. Please do like and subscribe and if you want to check out any of my other artwork, have a look at Nash Henkel Art on Insta and Facebook.